Hello, hello, hello. This is the one and only singing and dance DJ, Sandy K, coming at you right here from Stafford, Virginia. Now, somebody wanted me to get over here and sing, but I don't know if I should sing or not. I might torture somebody with my singing, you think? Anyways. Uh, just don't know what to say today. I guess I can go back to one of my stories. What story should I tell today? What story should I tell today, Mr. Anonymous? You don't know? Well, fiddlesticks. Hmm. Oh, I know what I could tell. I could tell about my niece. When I was a little girl, I used to go stay with my sister a lot, and she had a, she had a daughter about, I guess, maybe three years younger than me. And uh, we were best friends, like sisters, and so one night, um, we had to sleep in the same bed, and my niece tied my hair to her hair. So in the middle, and in the morning, early in the morning, she had to go out to the outhouse, and the outhouse stunk terribly, terribly bad. And so she tried to crawl out of bed and go to the outhouse, but my hair was tied to her hair. And so I started screaming, you're pulling my hair, you're pulling my hair, you're pulling my hair. And Lassie heard us, uh, my sister, who God bless her little heart, like a mom to me, and may she rest in peace, but she heard us a fussing and she came in there to see what was going on and she hollered, Kate, get out there to that bathroom with her before she pees her pants. And so Kathy went this way, and I went that way, and her hair went that way, and we go flop, and Lassie was laughing, and it still didn't. We crawled up, and it still tied together, and I had to go out to that toilet, and I had to hold my hair like this while she's in that freaking stinky-ass toilet. Now, what do you think about that? Boy. That was something else. Lassie got a laugh out of it. She was going to spank us, you know, but her husband goes, Lassie, they just little kids. Leave them alone. So she didn't spank us, but she laughed so hard, I think she was holding herself. I think she might have had to go to the bathroom, too, after that. <laughs> she laughed so hard. Well, that's one story. Let me see what else could I tell you that I got myself into. Oh... Well, I, I, I left home when I was 16. But before I left home, I was in seventh grade, English class. And the English teacher, she thought since I was, you know, poor and up in the head of a holler and didn't have a radio or TV or anything, she thought I was ignorant. She didn't know that I had walked out of the holler, which is like a mile long. And I had packed, I had a bookmobile. I loved them bookmobiles, man. They travel up Knox Creek, main Knox Creek down to Hurley, Virginia. Bookmobile travel up there, they stop at, if you run down the mouth of the hollers and stop at the, at the stops and flag them down, they'd stop and give you all kinds of books to go read. And so I carried them books up at Holler and I read and read and read. My favorite books was poetry. And so in English class, we had to write a poem. And I wrote one, and this kid grabbed it, and I wrote another one, and this kid grabbed it, and I wrote another one, and this kid grabbed it. And then she's coming to get my poem, and I had to write something really, really fast. And we had this little old hen, and it was a black hen, and it got caught by a weasel. But I didn't know how to spell weasel. So I couldn't think of how to spell weasel at the moment, so I put fox. And so this is what I wrote. It's a really short, little, cute poem. It says, the little black hen is black indeed. She's so stubborn, she'll never take heed. One of these days, a fox will get her or die. She'll need help so bad she'll cry. She will finally get loose when comes the help of a dear little red caboose. Do you know that teacher gave me a zero for that poem? She said plagiarism's a crime, and I go, what's plagiarism? I didn't know what that was. You copied this. Did you read it somewhere? Because I didn't copy it. No, but you copied it. Well, why do you think I copied it? It's too good. I never give above 99. 
And if I graded this, it would have to be 100 plus, and you're not smart enough to write this, so you write me another one, I give you a grade. Well, teacher, if I write another one, it will be online because I would be saying that I copied this poem and I did not. And my mom will get a switch and whip me, so I'm sorry, I cannot do that. I cannot tell a lie, and I did write the poem. She gave me a zero, said it was too good. But you know, that started me thinking. And so later on, after I had realized, well, you know, it was years later though, years later, I realized, you know, this is, you know, this, I, I must have had some kind of gift from God. And any, anyways, I ended up recording a, 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 a song, two songs on a, on a 45 record. And I had it on a jukebox and it played on the radio. And so I marched my little self right up to her little door and her husband, he was riding his riding lawnmower because they was pretty wealthy. And so he's riding his riding lawnmower. And I said, well, Mr. Dotson, I said, is your wife home? Yeah. I said, you don't remember me, but I was one of your students. But you were nice to me. I said, but your wife, she gave me a zero for a poem I wrote. She said, I copied it. Said, I wasn't smart enough to write a poem that well. I didn't copy that poem. I told him, and I said, this is proof. I said, I went out and I recorded a... I wrote some songs and I got a 45 record. I'm going to give her and I'm going to tell her, see, I didn't copy that poem. He started laughing so hard. I thought he was going to fall off his lawnmower. He said, yeah, she's not from here. She's a little uppity. She thinks she's a little better than the rest of us. I think they ended up getting divorced later on. I don't know, but I know one thing. He laughed when I told him I was giving her that. And I knocked on her door and I gave it to her. She probably never even played the record. But I don't care. I proved my point, because I didn't copy that poem. And it's a gift, and I didn't ask for it. It just is there. And so I write songs, silly songs. This is a silly song. And this one, I had so much fun with. And I'll tell you why I had so much fun with it. Because, my radio broke, and I had to travel like 500 miles with two kids with no video games and no radio and no nothing. So I started singing, and this is what I sang. And for 200 miles, these children loved this song and sang it with me for 200 miles. And it goes, ain't got no radio. Can't hear no song. I ain't got no radio. Can't sing along. But I hear music in my head. Guess I will till the day I'm dead. I just make up my own song. If you'd like, you could sing along. And like I said, for 200 miles, they enjoyed this song. And after 200 miles, I go, Mom, do you have to sing that again? And I go, what? You don't like my song? I don't care, and I kept on singing it. Well, I go down home, and of course, all the little kids, they love this little song. And so I sang it, and then I left, and I went back up north. About three months later, I went back down home to see my family. I started at my sister's door, and she goes, don't even think about it. Sounded like a devil, I tell you, she did. I said, what? I'm not even in the door. What happened? What did I do this time? Uh, that stupid song. I didn't sing anything yet. What is it? What, I don't know what song I see. What song? That stupid radio song. About that time, her granddaughter started coming in there, jumping up and down like this. Ain't Sandy, ain't Sandy, radio song, radio song, radio song. And she goes, outside, both of you. I go, what? What's wrong with the song? She goes, they drove me crazy with that song for three solid months. <laughs> and I guess that's why I torture my children. I write a song. I sing it over and over. Whoops. Until I remember it. And that's why it tortures them. I think that's about long enough, don't you think? Thumbs up. Yeah, that's long enough. Hallelujah. Thank you. Y'all have a great evening. This is the one and only singing dance DJ. Sandy Kay signing out right here from Stafford, Virginia.